Road. First time I've gone full gas up here, Dan's in front of me, just dropped some stuff at the bottom, making sure it was light as possible. Super hot day, making sure the headphones are working. Just rolling up, Kenston Road's just on the right, so we'll go ahead so we can get some speed into the corner. Uh, it's a bit dangerous trying to go across the roundabout, plus you lose a bit of speed. So you can see it's a cracker day here in Radelaide, 35 degrees, I believe it was, up to 40 at some points uh, today. According to my little wahoo element, so you can see Dan's just cruising around with just about to go at Kenston Road. So it's a real tough climb, uh, one of the hardest in uh, close to Adelaide. Average is about 12% for 1.2 kilometers. Uh, real horrible climb. Uh, I average about 16 Ks an hour and did about 395 watts. Uh, my time was all right. I got a 4.49, I think it was. Um, and yeah, it's pretty pretty brutal climb. Uh, I this is this year rest day, so you can see Dan's here. Uh, I just said to Dan, like, you know, lead me out if you want, but he'll, he's just basically going to do a real solid turn at the fr first bit and then just hold, hold on to me as much as he can. So go around this corner, hit up to about 600 watts. Um, and yeah, there's the time. The, the segment starts about here, and you can see I'm just in the wheel. We're going like 28 k's an hour up this 3-4% uh, gradient. Uh, I'm just trying to hold the wheel here. We averaged about 4.30 for the first minute. It was pretty tough, but this part of Kenston Road, if you have a lead out, very good. Wind conditions today, good, but not ideal. Like, it could have been a real strong headwind. It was more just a tailwind, sorry, but it felt more just like not a wind in comparison to like a tailwind. It just didn't really feel like anything. So you can see we're up to 8%, 7% here at 26 k's an hour. So Dan is doing an outrageous job. I'm doing about 380 to 400 in the wheel. Dan then sits down, the watts drop down a little bit. I didn't actually realize they dropped down as much as they did, but here, this is when I'm like, around this part, Dan said that um, he was probably gonna sort of end his lead out here, so I just pop up out of the saddle and just decide to go around him here. Uh, maybe surge it a little bit too much, we got up to 500 there, but I was just coming around. And this is where the steepest part begins, so I changed into small ring just, just before I turned that corner, and up the steep stuff, it reaches about 18 to 19%, I believe. And we're still going up an 11% gradient. So here is pretty comfortable. Like I have a 36, 28, and that's that's pretty good gearing for this. Um, you don't really ever feel like you want to spin more because often on these efforts, I prefer 80 RPM. Maybe if you want a 90 or 100, yeah, you need 34, 32. Uh, but generally on these efforts, it's good just to keep the cadence a bit lower and um, just sort of, I don't know, just keep pushing this. I, I prefer sort of having around 80 cadence, as a, which is my average. Um, so you can see here, we're flying up this climb. I was trying to hold about 400 watts uh, up this climb, which is about 6.6 .6 watts per kilo for me. Um, I was I weighed myself just before, I was about 62, so that probably brought it down to more like 6.4, 6.5 maybe uh, watts per kilo. If I'd done this in the morning, I would be 60 because I, I store a lot of water generally. When I wake up, I'm pretty light, 60, 61, and then during the day, I, I, I put on a bit of water. I was trying not to eat too much, I had a lot of like just sort of sugary cereal, uh, which is good, and then had some fruit juice as well. Um, I just try and stay as light as possible. I don't normally do efforts in the afternoon. This is about 1.30. I did it mainly because the wind, the wind was better in the afternoon. So I was like, all right, Dan, let's do it in the afternoon. So we made about 1.45. But you can see here the watts are really going up as it starts to ramp up. And this is uh, this is good. Like you sort of in the gear, I didn't really have a choice of gears. I just stayed the same in the same gear and basically just held this power all the way up the climb, which is absolutely beautiful. I faded a little bit at the end because I went out a bit too hard, hit like 4.20, 4.40 at the beginning. Uh, so you can see here it's real tough too just keep the power up the whole time. Uh, Kenston Road has a little bit of a flat section just coming up in the right, uh, when we turn this right hand corner. And this is really is the soul destroying part because it's just keeps going and just is just absolutely brutal. There's no traffic, there's no cars, it's literally just you, the road, and it's your heart rate absolutely rocketing. So up to 194 beats per minute. Um, I'm max is about 200, 201. Uh, so we're really giving a good shot today. Yesterday I did a 100K ride, 110K I think it was, which doesn't really hurt the legs too much because it's just an easy endurance pace. Um, but definitely, I, if I maybe had two days off before this or just done like one really hard effort like two days before and then had the day before off, I definitely could have pushed up. You can see here, I really fuck up here because I just don't keep the power strong enough here. Uh, it gets down to 9, 8% at some point, I think. And the watts are really struggling well below 400 watts and this is where my average really did tumble. But we're going to really ramp it up around this left-hand corner. This is pretty much coming towards the end of the, of the segment. We're about 2 minutes 30 to 3 minutes in now. And I, I did it in about 4.49, and it was just absolutely brutal. Um, I was three seconds off my goal, which is hard. He has 4.46 uh, under some dubious circumstances, to say the least. But anyway, we'll ignore those. Um, Chris Harper's got 4.41. He's eight seconds ahead of me. Maybe I could do it. There's some, th there's some ways you can do climb this road slightly illegally. Um, you also don't need a helmet on this one, really, so you could cut, that would cut some weight. 
Uh, and if I also knew the finish line, you can finish it slightly earlier than I did. The Strava segments were a bit weird. Then you can see it ramps up again back up to 14, 15%. And we're, again, just trying to hold 400 watts as long as possible. And you can see, as I always say in every video, when the power starts to fluctuate, that means I'm really suffering. So you can see it's now like 380, and then it'll probably surge up around this thing up to 400 again, and it'll go up to 470. You can see I'm really struggling now, but every time I saw it below, like go below sort of 350, I was really trying to like just surge up. I wasn't looking at my power meter too much because I pretty much knew the effort required uh, and just how to hurt myself enough. When you get more experience with the power meter, you just sort of know, like you don't really need to look at it until like the beginning part to make sure you're not going crazy and then the rest of it is just so you do it on feel and you just know exactly how hard you're going to push. And this bit here, you come around, you're like, oh, I think this is the end. But the end is slightly on the left up here. And the first car park is technically where, the second car park is technically where the end is, but you can you can finish it slightly earlier. And this is where I just saw the end, it's just sprinting, trying to get every single second. And you can see I probably could have paced it a bit better, but it's actually the segment ends slightly earlier. But I remember just riding up to this, because this is pretty much where I knew the segment ended. And I was just completely gone. Like, I just could barely, like, move. I was just, like, absolutely gone. There you can see me. I just literally stood there for about, like, five minutes. Um, Dan went up about 20 seconds behind me, got about 5.08. You can just see him there. Uh, so, yeah, cheers for watching. And I'll see you in the next vid. See what I mean? USDA certified lean.